It's the Evening Show on BBC Radio Wales and me, Alan Thompson. Joining me now on the programme is an author called Paul Carr. He is the Head of Music and Sound at the Atrium University of South Wales and he has edited the first academically focused collection of essays on the late great Frank Zappa, an American musician, a composer, a guitarist, a recording engineer, a record producer and also a film director. Now Zappa's interface with religion, horror, death, movies, modernism, satire, freaks, technology, resistance, censorship and the avant-garde are brought together for the first time in this book and Paul joins me now. Hello Paul. Thanks very much. Thank you ever nice so much. Nice to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you um, with us. Before we get stuck into the uh, the content of this book you've put together, why Frank Zappa? Are you a huge fan? I guess you are. Uh, when I was grown up in the 70s, uh, Zappa was somebody who was on the periphery, I suppose, of the music that I was listening to. Um, I first got into his music because he he's a great guitar player. Mm. And being a guitar player myself, I... I become aware of um, Zappa's guitar playing first and foremost, yeah. And I then realised again, this is a as a sort of twelve, thirteen year old that um, he was also incredibly funny. Mm. It, uh, I, I did find his music uh, really appealing from from uh, a, hu- a humour side of things, yeah. But in terms of why Frank Zappa, you know, his his music sort of continued on the periphery through the eighties and the nineties, if you like. And it was only really over the last seven years that I realised there was actually a lot more to his music than what I originally thought. And he he seemed to be somebody who, certainly in academic terms, wasn't getting the um, attention that he deserved. Yeah. And that's why I started to um, to to write these essays on Zappa, hmm. uh, which accumulated in his book. Um, and a phenomenal musician. I mean, it, and it's interesting how people get into Zappa. I got into him through the Beatles route because in the early seventies he sort of befriended John Lennon a little bit when he went to mm. uh, when Lennon went to New York, and also Ringo Starr was in a film of his called Two Hundred Motels. Yeah. So there was a Beatles link, and that's how I got into him. But I wasn't hearing Frank Zappa on the radio, certainly. Certainly, and if you if you read anything about Zappa, uh, you read his autobiography and other texts that have been written about him. Yeah. He, he quite plainly says he didn't like the Beatles. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> in fact, uh, did he parody Sgt. Pepper's cover on? You, you talk about this in the book. What album was that? Uh, We're Only In It For The Money, which right. was a, a, a parody on Sgt. Pepper's, the, on the cover of Sgt. Pepper's. And a lot of the music also parodies the Beatles tracks. Yeah. Um, he, he was a, you know, satire was very much at the forefront of what um, Zappa was involved in. Why didn't he like the Beatles? Um, I think there's possibly a number of ways, but I think it was their commercial success. It was just the fact that they overtly went, that they they overtly attempted to to sell lots of records, and that was very much against Zappa's sort of artistic tendencies. Yeah, he at least that's what he said. He obviously had to make a living, but yeah. it was all about art for him. Yeah, um, you know, he was an independent artist. He uh, very protective about owning his copyright, yeah, uh, which his family have continued mm. to do uh, in the years since he died twenty years ago. Oddly enough, yeah. twenty years ago this this year is it really twenty years? That's amazing. 20, twenty years, yeah. His influence on other um, musicians obviously is is everywhere. You've spoken to various people with the book. Steve Hillage, yeah, uh, legendary guitar player. Steve yes. Hillage. Uh, how did you get on getting in contact with Steve Hillage to talk about the uh, the career and life of Zappa? Yeah, well, I got to meet Steve Hillage. It's a, I had a a, a PhD student at the Atrium uh, in Cardiff who uh, used to play in a band called Gong. He was oh, the yeah. bass player in Gong, a guy called Mike Howlett. They're a prog rock band, Gong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were, Gong were actually the first band I ever seen. <laughs> I think it's corrupted my musical <laughs> sort of horizons. But um, Mike Howlett was um, on tour with Gong and Steve Hillage was playing guitar. Yeah. And um, I was across in Germany at a festival called the Zappenali Festival, which is a, an amazing festival in Bad Dobrum in Germany where um, all the Zappa tribute bands from all over the world congregate for three days and play Zappa's music for three days. Are there lots of them? Lots, lots of, of tribute it's, bands? It's incredible. Really? Uh, yeah, including <clears throat> many bands who include a lot of alumni so a lot of the ex 
yeah. Zappa, Mothers of Invention, yeah. um, bands, people like Napoleon Murphy Brock and Don Preston, they come and play there. But also you get lots of weird and wacky versions of Zappa's music playing there. And um, Gong were there four years ago, just as a band who, you know, I wouldn't say they were influenced by Zappa, but they were a band who were around at the same sort of time. And uh, I managed to get to speak to Steve Hillage um, through that, really. Right. And how big an influence was Zappa on Steve Hillage and his music? Yeah, I mean, you listen to Steve Hillage's guitar playing, you know, there's no overt influences to, to Zappa. What Steve Hillage told me, he was influenced by um, uh, a lot of the early uh, compositional techniques that Zappa employed Yeah, uh, and on the early albums like Freak Out yeah. and uh, Absolutely Free. Uh, but it was more a conceptual influence than uh, an influence that you can actually hear. As I say, you can't really hear the influence yeah. when you listen to Steve Hillage's playing and put it against Zappa's. But but it's there somewhere. But it was there as a conceptual influence. In yeah. the mix. And Zappa, as we discover in the book, he combines uh, an eclectic mix of styles. There, There's rock, there's electronic, there's jazz, jazz fusion, orchestral stuff in there as well. I mean, is that what makes his music so interesting to you, do you think, is all those different styles? It's like a big soup of influence, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. And it is one of the things that make... It's so interesting to me. Zappa had a, a maxim, which was something along the lines of anything, any time, for no reason at all. Hmm. And his Zappa does tend, his music does tend to reflect that. So, as you said before, you can have a doo-wop section followed by a heavy metal section, yeah. followed by a jazz section. Um, I find that really interesting from a musical point of view, but obviously in terms of commercial potential. Yeah. It's, it causes problems with people who are <laughs> used to a certain type of listening. It's, it's massively influenced by uh, music concrete, yeah. you know, which is um, all about mixing found sound. And there'd be no, no rules and regulations about what you can place next to each other. Yeah. It's, it's hugely influenced by that. Um, one yeah. of the, your essay, in fact, uh, Paul, Zappa and Technology, is very interesting in the book because he passed away in 1993, which was just the time of the internet starting to sort of yeah. get uh, exposure. And it's, it's, it's interesting. What do you think he would have made of, uh, of the advances in technology over the past 20 odd years? You would have lapped it up, surely. It would have been. Uh, no one would know what what music Zappa would have come out with in the last 20 years. Yeah. But I think one thing's for sure, he would have embraced the technology. Yeah. There's no question about that because his his, record, his track record going all the way back to the mid-60s through to the point when he died was about embracing technology, mm. be it studio technology or when the Synclavier came out, for example. He was one of the first... What was that? What was the Synclavier? The, the Synclavier was a state-of-the-art... Um, computerized music system yeah um some musicians such as um pat metheny for example actually took it on the road and he would sample various